It's good to see you. Welcome to the Danny Go Story Time. Today I've got three books. One of them you probably know. One of them you may know. And then one of them you probably don't know. I like doing a little bit of a mix. So there's some you are familiar with and then some that you've never read before that you can hear. All right, so let's get to it. The first book, I think you probably know it. It's one of my favorites. It's a lot of people's favorite. Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. It's a good one. Let's read it. The night Max wore his wolf suit it made mischief of one kind and another. His mother called him Wild Thing and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. and grew and grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around and an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max and he sailed off through night and day And in and out of weeks, and almost over a year, to where the wild things are. And he came to the place where the wild things are. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars. They gnashed their terrible teeth. Arr, arr, arr. They rolled their terrible eyes a little, 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 and showed their terrible claws. Till Max said, Be still, and tamed them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all and made him king of all wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then, all around from far away across the world, he smelled good things to eat, so he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, Oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, No. The wild things roared their terrible roars. Roar! And gnashed their terrible teeth. Arr, arr, arr. And rolled their terrible eyes. <laughs> and showed their terrible claws. <laughs> but Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye and sailed back over a year, and in and out of weeks, and through a day, and into the night of his very own room, where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. I like that one a lot. I really like the illustrations in that. Do you see that the story and pictures were by the same person, Maurice Sendak? 
That's pretty cool to be able to write and draw that well. All right, so that was the one you probably knew. Now for the one that I don't think you know, but I really like it. It's called <gasps> Caps for Sale. Have you ever heard of this one? A tale of a peddler, some monkeys, and their monkey business. This one's pretty silly, and it's got some fun voices in it. This one is told and illustrated by Esfir Slobodkina. I think I said that right. It's a cool name. All right. Make sure you can see. <sighs> Once, there was a peddler who sold caps. But he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. He carried them on top of his head. <laughs> First, he had on his own checked cap then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very top, a bunch of red caps. He walked up and down the streets, holding himself very straight so as not to upset his caps. As he went along, he called, Caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. One morning, he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up the street, and he walked down the street, calling, Caps! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody wanted even a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. I think I'll go for a walk in the country, said he. And he walked out of town. Slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his caps. He walked for a long time until he came to a great big tree. That's a nice place for a rest, thought he. And he sat down very slowly under the tree and leaned back little by little against the tree trunk so as not to disturb the caps on his head. Then he put up his hand to feel if they were straight. First his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. They were all there, so he went to sleep. He slept for a long time. When he woke up, he was refreshed and rested. But before standing up, he felt with his hand to make sure his caps were in the right place. All he felt was his own checked cap. <gasps> he looked to the right of him. No caps. He looked to the left of him. No caps. He looked in back of him. No caps. He looked behind the tree. No caps. Then he looked up into the tree, and what do you think he saw? <gasps> on every branch sat a monkey, and on every monkey was a gray, or brown, or blue, or red cap. <laughs> the peddler looked at the monkeys. The monkeys looked at the peddler. He didn't know what to do. Finally. He spoke to them. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking a finger at them. You give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their fingers back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. This made the peddler angry, so he shook both hands at them and said, You monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook both their hands back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. Now he felt quite angry. He stamped his foot and he said, You monkeys, you! You better give me back my caps! But the monkeys only stamped their feet back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. By this time, the peddler was really very, very angry. He stamped both his feet and shouted, 
You monkeys, you! You must give me back my caps! But the monkeys only stamped both their feet back at him and said, At last, he became so angry that he pulled off his own cap, threw it on the ground, and began to walk away. But then, each monkey pulled off his cap, and all the gray caps, and all the brown caps, and all the blue caps, and all the red caps came flying down out of the tree. So the peddler picked up his caps and put them back on his head. First his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. And slowly, slowly he walked back to town calling, Caps! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! <laughs> the end. What'd you think of caps for sale? That was kind of silly, right? <laughs> he got so frustrated, but the monkeys were just copying him. He got his caps back, at least. All right, so the third book is a very special book to me. It's been my favorite Dr. Seuss book for a long time, ever since I was a little kid. Can you guess which one it is? I bet you know a lot of Dr. Seuss books. Oh, The Thinks You Can Think. I love this book. You've probably read it before. It's just so imaginative, and I love all the illustrations. I always love Dr. Seuss anyway, but this one has got to be at least one of my favorites. Probably my favorite Dr. Seuss book. Let's read it. Oh, The Thinks You Can Think by Dr. Seuss. You can think up some birds. That's what you can do. You can think about yellow or think about blue. You can think about red. You can think about pink. You can think up a horse. Oh, the thinks you can think. Oh, the thinks you can think up if only you try. If you try, you can think up a guff going by. And you don't have to stop. You can think about schlop. Schlop, schlop. Beautiful schlop. Beautiful schlop with a cherry on top. You can think about gloves. You can think about snubs. You can think a long time about snubs and their gloves. You can think about Kitty O'Sullivan Krause in her big balloon swimming pool over her house. I used to always want that swimming pool. thought it was so cool. Think of black water. Think up a white sky. Think up a boat. Think of blues blowing by. You can think about night. A night in none up. The birds are asleep, and the three moons are up. You can think about day, a day in dead ache. The water is blue, and the birds are awake. Think, think and wonder, wonder and think. How much water can 55 elephants drink? You can wonder, how long is the tail of a zong? There are so many thinks that a thinker can think. Would you dare yank a tooth of the rink rinker fink? And what would you do if you met a jibu? Oh, the things you can think. Think of Peter, the postman, 
who crosses the ice once every day, and on Saturdays, twice. There's Peter. Think. You can think any think that you wish. Think a race on a horse, on a ball, with a fish. Think of light. Think of bright. Think of stairs in the night. Think. Think a ship. Think up a long trip. Go visit the Vipper. The Vipper of Vip. And left. Think of left. And think about beft. Why is it that beft always go to the left? And why is it so many things go to the right? You can think about that until Saturday night. <laughs> wow, look at all those things going to the right. Think left and think right. Think low and think high. Oh, the thinks you can think up. If only you try. I love that book. Doesn't it just fire up your imagination? Seeing all those pictures of made up places makes me want to draw some of my own made up places. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for reading with me today. I hope you enjoyed these three books. And remember, if you want to hear your favorite book on Danny Goes Storytime, just get your mommy or daddy to send me a message. And if I've got it, I'll read it. All right, have a great day. See you next time.